welcome to Girl Talk. We are filming here at the Vinery, a stained glass studio off of East Wash. Thank you, yep. Elise. East Wash. <laughs> Keep I, it real. I know, I always real. have to say the full thing, East Washington, but we're off of East Wash. We've got a great show for you today. We're talking art, we're talking bras, and we're talking <laughs> beauty. So, I Perfect. mean, this that is, is a, a girly show. show. Yeah. Yeah. That's girl talk for you. Yeah, that's, that's good, that's show. good. Well, and the, the beauty place we're talking to is Panache, and they're located in the Dells, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And it's also a beauty school. So there's gonna be a little extra education for us in that. Yeah, that I've place, always so. wondered about that profession, so I'm excited to learn a little bit more from them. I think yeah. it'll be educational to learn about the educational side of beauty. All right, all right. I've always Jessa. thought that a hairstylist has got job security. I have a hard time seeing that getting automated. True. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. You're always so. going to need her. Don't yeah. you think? Or him. Yes, or him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. That's a yeah, good that's point. That's a good point. Good so, that, Janet. Maybe if you're considering a career or a career change. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Who else we got? Oh. We're talking bras, you said. I did. Yeah, we're talking bras. We are. Well, and not just bras, because this is a TLN original. So, oh, yeah, that's so to show top. off a shirt, a shirt kind of both things you can wear. So, I got the luxury of being there with her the other day and doing some shopping with some friends. She has everything there. Is the owner of Contours, mm -hmm. the lady we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I'll yep. play the role of Janet here and bring it all back together. Thank for you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Because we keep, you know. <laughs> yeah. I so did, she is wonderful. I did yeah. do a little reading um, about women wearing the wrong size bra, and apparently the biggest errors that women are making is that the band around is too big, yep. which means the straps have to bear a lot of weight. Mm. And then, then you get neck pain and headaches from the straps digging in. The other was that the cup size is too small. You know, things just aren't fitting properly. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That can ruin your day, you know? <laughs> oh, I think people just don't even know they've got the wrong size. Yeah. I mean, isn't that kind of the deal? This is the old Oprah show from way back when, depending on how old you are, you might not have seen it. Yeah, but how long ago was this show? I'm not sure. <laughs> Few weeks ago, um, you know, Oprah. <laughs> but she said like eighty percent of women are wearing the wrong size. Eighty percent? Yeah. Talk oh. about job security, right? Yeah. For Tia. Yeah. Um, because I think a lot of people don't know they're wearing the wrong size right. until they finally get that professional fitting and get in the right size. So, or right. if it's been a long time since you've had a fitting, your body changes. Yeah, so. it does. And maybe bras have too a little bit if it's been a really long time. Yeah. So. They definitely have because she has some very special stuff there that is a lot, a lot, a lot of different sizes. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what her claim to fame, so check her out, definitely. True, yeah. sounds good. Yep. Yeah. Binary, okay. we're going to be chatting with them. Doing some power tools. Doing some power tools from <laughs> Saturday. Well said. And Elise is here. Look who we got. Hi, Elise. Nice to be back. Nice to see you. Yeah, we love seeing you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. we got a lot of show coming up after the break here on Girl Talk. Back to Girl Talk, you may recognize this beautiful space. We're here at the Vinery, a stained glass studio off of East Washington, and we're going to chat with the folks later in the show. We always have fun, so stick with us. That'll be coming up a little bit later. Right now, we've got the ultimate girly topic, which of course <laughs> I love, but I'm really excited to chat with these folks. This is Shannon and Karen. They're with Panache Academy of Beauty. So glad to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love the name, first of all, what a fun <laughs> name. Um, but tell us a little bit about Panache Academy of Beauty. Give us a little overview. Okay. We started in 2008 in a small location in Baraboo, and then we moved in 2012 to Lake Delton for a bigger facility for our, to accommodate our student base. Sure. Um, and I just purchased the school this year in February. Oh, so. how exciting. Yes. Congrats. Some new Congrats. And exciting yeah, things. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of programs do you offer at Panache? Um, so we offer all of the state approved um, classes. So cosmetology practitioner, barber, esthetician, manicurist, um, manager, and then instructor trainee. Oh, wow. So, yeah. so quite a few that you can kind of select what you are looking, looking to get into. Yep, That's absolutely. Fun. So I am very curious about these programs and sort of the links. So what mm -hmm. kind of time frame are you looking at if you decide that this is something you want to do? How long does a program take to finish usually? Is there an average? Are they all different? They're all different and they're all based on hours. So it's not a credit-based program, it's hours. Oh, so okay. for cosmetology practitioner, it's 1550. Barber is 1,000. Esthetician, 600. Manicure is 300. And then the smaller programs, um, 
instructor training and manager are 150. Oh wow! And then, okay. and then once a student finishes these programs, what mm -hmm. can what kind of like position can they obtain? Really, the sky is like the limit with that. It's I mean, someone could open a salon, they could instruct at a school, um, they could actually be on a cruise ship doing hair and makeup. You know, whatever they that really want to get out fabulous. of it. So once you get certified, <laughs> you're kind of yeah. like yeah. good to go with whatever you want to do. Yeah. that's great. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I also like the fact that. Um, because it's hours based, you can really make it work for your lifestyle then. Absolutely. And I never thought about that with these types of, um, of mm -hmm. careers. But if yeah. you're if you work full time and you really want to follow your passion, mm -hmm. you can do it on your own terms. That's yes. a really great point. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the the money component. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. is this an expensive thing? How do people finance or pay for school typically? Mm -hmm. So the really good thing is that we are a title fund uh, for funded uh, mm -hmm. school. So that means that students who qualify can actually get financial aid for these programs. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, and then we also do have payment plans for students, too, if they need them. That's really great. Mm -hmm. So there's ways to get some assistance. Absolutely. These are necessary. A girl's yes. got to get her hair done, right? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody needs that. Yeah. And then just to wrap wrap it up here, mm -hmm. um, where does one find information about Panache? So um, our website has all the information about all the classes. Um, okay. We have social media. You can find it there. You can stop into the school and chat with us. And then how long does a program usually take? They're all a little bit different um, okay. just because of the hours. Sure. So it depends on which course you're really looking to get out of it. I think that's, that's nice too because you can kind of decide. I don't know if you can build on them or, or yeah. you, can, yep. you can always go back and add. But Absolutely. if you know you want to be able to have a career within X amount of time, mm -hmm. you might go for one of the shorter you know, maybe that's why some people start as like a manicurist because yep. there's less hours. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's all coming together. <laughs> yeah, it's brains churning. Um, so you guys are out okay. in Wisconsin Dells, right? Correct. Correct. So um, I've never been, but um, you'll you're have to on, stop in. Yeah, yes. I'm excited to yep. on Zap Drive. Mm -hmm. And then, do people is enrollment sort of like open, or how do they do so that? So we have um, enrollment dates on our um, on our website. Okay. Typically, there's one to two enrollments each month, so we have a continuous enrollment. So um, mm -hmm. whenever the best time is for you to start, we can get you started. That's really great. Yes. Mm -hmm. that I missed my calling. I want to be a hairstylist <laughs> yes. on a cruise ship. That's Absolutely. my new <laughs> world. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Well, you guys are fabulous to chat yes. with. Thank you so much. This is Karen and Thank Shannon you. from Panache Academy of Beauty. Thank We've got you. more Girl Talk coming up after the break, so please stick around. Welcome back to Girl Talk. We're at the Vinery today and we're having a fabulous time. And it's even more fabulous now because we have Tia Lynn with us today. She's the owner of Contours Lingerie and you're also a designer. We're so lucky to have you on the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. And it's also an extra party today yes. because it's your birthday. Yay! Happy birthday, birthday, girl. Thank you. I love it. Thanks for spending it with us. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Nice it's so great. You're really part of our Girl Talk family, mm -hmm. so we're so lucky to have you. And Contours is such a fun place to go if it is your birthday or you've got a birthday coming up and you want to shop around and get something special. And I actually stopped in not too long ago and I had a fitting and I was really surprised at how reasonable the prices are at Contours because I think people have in their mind that, you know, it's just going to be crazy extremes. What would you say the average price is of a bra at Contours? The average price is between 58 and 68 and I would say about 80% of our inventory is right in that price range. Of course, we have gorgeous things from Paris, so you may fall in love with those <laughs> and have to go a little bit more. Right. That's what's but so they're great. kind you of the worth range. two. Yeah. The ones from Paris. So. Absolutely. You have a little bit of everything. Well, and yeah. you always pay better. You have to pay more to get the better quality, I feel like, in life. So. And they're going to mm -hmm. last you exactly. forever. Exactly. Exactly. You need something that's going to last because usually mine end up breaking in like three months. So it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants. <laughs> no. So we've seen um, your before and after pictures and you can um, actually move the bust line up two to four inches. So what is your average charge for a fitting? We don't charge for our fittings. Really? It's a complimentary service and it's, it's something that every woman should do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for herself and, you know, why not look your best, feel your best, and then, you know, maybe some of our products are a few dollars more than you'd find online, but 
typically not. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we, we stay at suggested retail and it's all about getting that professional fit so that you're comfortable and feel confident in your clothing all day long. And that's the big thing, that mm -hmm. you feel so much better. And you can tell the difference when you've been in the wrong bra, and then you put me in the right one, and it was like, whoa, huge difference. I mean, you could feel it. <laughs> Seriously, you could feel it. And I had brought my mom in, actually. We went in together. And it was, it was so much fun. We had such a blast. We were across the fitting rooms from each other, so we were showing each other what we had on. How often, though, do you think you should get a bra fitting? If you feel frumpy, that's yeah. the day. You know, because typically if you're not feeling all put together, you might have added a little or taken a little off. Mm -hmm. In Wisconsin, we have summer bodies and winter bodies. Isn't that the So <laughs> the reality is the heavier your girls are, the more often you're going to have to buy something to lift them. Sure. It's, it's that simple. And if you're comfortable, great. And if you're not, it's time to come back in. Absolutely. Well, that's a good rule. So um, a lot of times you, you kind of know that you should go in every so often, but <laughs> people might think that it's going to take a long time mm -hmm. and they just don't have enough time to do it. Do you get them in and out pretty quick? How long does it take? I, a first time fitting, if you want to try everything in your size, a woman usually will be in there for about 45 minutes. However, we figure out your size in less than five minutes. So if you want to oh, try wow. two things and you just want a t-shirt bra, you can be in and out in less than 15 minutes wow. easily. That's way and faster it, than I would have thought. Mm -hmm. Now real quick, um, do we have to make an uh, appointment with you to do a bra fitting or can we just go right in and be done? We are ready to go. So eh. don't wait. Yes. <laughs> don't. No excuses, people. Yeah. <laughs> we, we kind of go through so many and that's what we do all day that you know, appointments don't really make sense for us. We always have at least two fitters on hand. So it, we really welcome everyone to just come in at the time that's convenient for you. Oh, absolutely. And there's so much one-on-one -on -one attention, which I also really enjoyed. And I didn't feel rushed, which I think at other stores, sometimes mm -hmm. we feel that way. And mm -hmm. I loved mm -hmm. that attention. So if people do want to swing by, where are you located again? We're on Mineral Point Road in the Homestead Shops, it's across from Oakwood Village and right next to CUNA Mutual. Perfect. And be sure to check out Tia's line as well oh. at the store. It's <laughs> wonderful. Again, Tia Lynn with Contours, thank you so much for Thank being you. With us. Thank you. And we'll be back with more Girl Talk after this. Welcome back to Girl Talk. This is our final segment we've been filming today with our guests at the Vinery. And we finally have the head glass gurus <laughs> of the Vinery with us right now. With well me. put. Yeah, I have Denny Burkery, he's the owner and uh, the head honcho, and head instructor and glass guru, Josh Gro Krogman. Krogman, yes. All righty. What are we talking about today, guys? Well, we're going to start out, we're going to explain a little bit about uh, a basic, making a basic stained glass window. And so we're going to kind of cover a glass cutting segment and then also a soldering segment. Cool. I guess I never thought about starting with something tiny. I like this. Okay. Yeah. So what's the first step? Janet's like, go big or go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the first step is uh, we're actually, we already got a pre-cut circle here. Um, but I'm going to pre-number my pieces so I know exactly where they go back together. Um, and you can see I have a nice little pattern on there. And I'm going to line up my ruler, and I already made some pre-cuts beforehand. I'm just going to go right down the line. Is that scoring it? That is scoring my glass. Okay. Um, and then I can break that right down the middle. And like I said, I have some, some pre-cut pieces already. Oh, you make that look I so easy. I was just going to say, easy. Josh makes it look really... <laughs> <laughs> makes it look really easy, but they are such good instructors here that when you come in, it's just as easy to do by yourself. We want to make you feel yes. comfortable. At least you've exactly. done some of this before. I have, have you yeah. Done this part? Um, yes. <laughs> Not quite as quickly, but uh, I have. <laughs> she says that hesitantly. Yeah. <laughs> so voila, we have our pre-cut pieces, um, and then we have some bevels that go in the center of these pieces. So those fit right in the center. And my last bevel I have here, um, after we have everything cut out, um, we wrap everything in foil. Um, so we have to carefully individually wrap foil around each piece, um, and then assemble it all together. And then you're at uh, the next phase. Exactly. The next phase. So just to back up a little bit, the foil comes off the roll. It's a tape. Mm 
mm -hmm. and has an adhesive on the back side. So we wrap each piece of glass with the copper foil. And the reason for that is that the next step is we're going to solder this piece together. Your solder does not readily stick to the glass, but it will readily stick to the copper. So the copper provides a base for the solder to stick to. It's all coming together now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. So there's the, the details. The copper is so, the secret sauce. It is. All right. So, but in order to get the solder to stick to the copper, we take a liquid flux and we brush it on top of the copper. That removes any oxidation from the copper and readily allows the solder to stick. That makes sense so far? Yes. So. Okay. Well, let's see. Are we going to get quizzed on this later? Yes, no. yes. Yeah, there not. will be a quiz. So, um, when you're talking about soldering, can anyone solder? Um, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. You know, we, we kind of have, a, with a stained glass, we sort of have a, an age restriction. We like to see um, people of 14 years or older. Okay. Uh, uh, due to the fact that Which we're working with... Which makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Hot, glass hot soldering and iron and all that. So I have my soldering iron here, and I'm going to take it. I'm just going to melt it right on top of the copper like that. Boy, at least how many times have you seen a stained glass window with that soldering seal that never... Never, no yeah. yeah. It's really neat to see how it's done. Yeah. So what we strive for is a nice, smooth, even soldering bead, okay? And as a beginner, that's the challenge, and it takes a little practice, but... Uh, uh, what, what, the steady hand or making a straight line or what? Constant flow, steady hand, a yeah. nice bead all the way across. Okay. If feeding just the right amount of solder. Okay, I'm going to go the other into route. Into the iron. What happens if it gets on the glass? Oh, you mean like that? <gasps> <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, you just kind of scooch it back over. Really? It, oh, it wow. Right back over. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So, and that does happen. So, yeah, that's a technique to get take care of it. Okay. So, um, as we keep going here, these are pieces specifically for the garden or? Um, oh, okay. Well, this particular piece here would be hanging, okay, right. so like get some light passing through, yeah. yeah. But then moving on to what we have laid out here, I'd have yeah, Josh explain. Yeah, I'm seeing a few garden items here, which is These probably like the perfect time of the season. A few things some customers have made. Um, there's some little chickadees. And uh, yeah, the fusing center um, we have open, but... Uh, we have these, yeah, the feathers, and we have a, a garden um, weekend coming up. We do. It's uh, June 17th, and we, it's called All Day Fusing uh, Garden Art. And it's it'll be about seven hours worth of people coming in and making uh, different projects. So they're going to be making uh, the, the garden leaf. They'll mm -hmm. be also be making the flower nice. that you have in Absolutely your hand there. Gorgeous. A larger version of them. We've and seen that a few times. A few yeah. times. Right. And, and then, the garden stake there. And the garden stake. Okay, that particular piece would fit onto a copper framework and go right out into the garden. So the soldering is for this indoor piece. And right. then this is a different method called fusing. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, how does that work? Fusing, um, basically you have glass that is all compatible with itself. Um, and we put it in the kiln and it melts down together. So when the glass heats up and cools down, all the atoms in the glass are tested to um, cool off at the same rate and they're all compatible so they don't break or anything. If I put this glass in the kiln, um, it would probably stress and break. We wouldn't get a nice uh, finished piece like that. And that's what makes the glass stick together, like these white pieces stick onto the green so leaf. So putting them in the kiln is actually what makes them stick together when they melt down and into each other, essentially fuse, fusing together. Yeah, this particular piece here, these leaves are probably fired up to about 1,380 degrees. Wow. Okay, and then you take a piece like this one over here, and that goes even higher because it, when we fuse it higher, it all goes smooth. So, but the basic process is that the glass is melted into the kiln, it forms a bond to each other, and that's what, you know, creates our pieces and uh, makes beautiful garden art. Okay. So this is fused. Why can't you fuse this? Is it more delicate or? Uh, well, Josh is uh, explaining there's a different compatibility of glass. Okay. okay. And when we, all our fusing projects, it all has the same compatibility. So when it melts together, there's no stress in the glass. Gotcha. All righty. Well, you so, hear from the expert. <laughs> <laughs> so there's items that you can make for your garden or for your home or maybe mm -hmm. a gift for someone else. Oh, good idea. And just before we leave, Josh, when was the uh, event? The uh, June 17th. Okay. Is that a Sunday? Saturday. A Saturday. Saturday. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's for any of these projects? 
any of the fuse, the, the fuse, fuse, the glass, the, fuse and the glass, mm -hmm. yep. and the garden items. Mm -hmm. All righty, sounds good. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Always Thank you. interesting. It's always fun. Well, thanks to all of our guests today. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Girl Talk. <laughs>